yeah, maybe the disclaimer, Ether is a crypto fuel, it's not a cryptocurrency. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, he already mentioned what I do. I mean, I'm, I'm an unknown person in the fashion space for sure, uh, but I'm not an unknown person in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, I work uh, with Ethereum since uh, three years and build uh, a lot of the user facing things coming from the Ethereum Foundation, uh, including developer tools. And I initiated a few standards. And one of them is probably something even you probably heard of um, is. The ERC20 token standard is the standard for the tokens on the Ethereum blockchain, which are behind most of these ICOs today. And I guess you heard about the term ICO, initial coin offering already. And I'm working also on a blockchain identity standard, ERC725. So I will explain now what is the blockchain. It will get a bit technical, <laughs> but I try to make it really easy. Um, and then actually how this relates to fashion. So what is the blockchain? It's first and foremost, it's a computer network. It's actually a software you can download, and this software forms a network between all the different softwares and the different computers. And this software allows that you can send transactions, and they get passed along, and all the transaction history and all the current transactions are synchronized between all the computers. So on the end, every computer has all the transactions plus its history. So this kind of allows that I can send money around and everybody in the network knows that. But how do you make sure uh, that every computer knows what is exactly the latest state of the game? What is the, what is the, um, the latest state of all the transactions? And that's kind of the clever solution which Satoshi Nakamoto came up with is the consensus algorithm. And the consensus algorithm is kind of like um, a competition between computers trying to find a hash. A hash is a digital fingerprint. So they all try to find the right hash, and the computer network has a way to verify which is the correct hash. And if you're the lucky one, you find the next hash, then you actually like, group the, 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 the latest transactions and added them to the network. And everybody knows this is now the valid last uh, state of transactions. So this is a clever mechanism, and it also uses up a lot of energy Though there are a lot of uh, consensus algorithms which actually don't use up a lot of en energy, but Bitcoin, for example, and currently Ethereum does. And it's very secure. It's basically a way that nobody can overtake or control the network. So this computer network basically maintains itself without a single party or a company or anybody in charge. And a very important piece in this is digital signatures. So it means everything you do on the blockchain, and for sure in the future, everything you do out of the blockchain will be digitally signed. And this may means that you have a so-called private key. That's kind of like your key. It's your password. And with this, you can sign any kind of data. And in the blockchain, you can sign transactions. And if you sign transactions, the network knows that you are now allowing to, for example, move your coins around or execute some logic on the network. So this is the way how the network can know that you are actually wanting to move your coins or that you actually did something. This is the way how the network identifies you. And the, 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 the nice thing about uh, public-private cryptography is that you, everybody can uh, verify that you signed it without that they know your password or that, they that you ever have to reveal your password. Like think today, you know, if you're going online, you're sending always your password. Uh, over the wire every single time you log in. And uh, it's actually stored by the company who has the login, right? And they try to make it secure by hashing it and so on. So, but what the, uh, on the end up happens, if, if they get hacked, they get, get all the passwords of everybody, right? Uh, this cryptography actually solved that problem. You never give away your password anymore. So and this creates what we, what we call a, a blockchain. It's a decentralized network because there's no single power and it's distributed. It's immutable because through the way how it technically works, nobody can alter any kind of part without making the whole thing invalid and therefore making actually himself invalid. And everything on the network is, is uh, verified because everything is digitally signed. So the network and everybody else knows who did what. So this creates this thing we call blockchain. And you can not only send money around, uh, 
especially what Ethereum brought to uh, the world is that you actually can execute any kind of program on top of a blockchain. So not only money from A to B, like in Bitcoin, but actually uh, executing complex programs which could split money, actually also hold money, and send it out over, uh, over time or when a specific condition is met. And you can have human actors, you can also have program actors, or the so-called smart contract themselves could be an actor in its own. And they all operate on that thing, blockchain. It's kind of like a neutral infrastructure, right? So and now I'm, as a tech guy, <laughs> try to answer the question, what is fashion? Um, and I will make a link. Um, so what is fashion? I would say it's uniqueness. Things are unique, like uh, back in the days uh, at the court of King Louis XIV, where haute couture was formed, um, people wanted to be unique. They wanted to have special outfits, they wanted to dress specific, and they spent a lot of money in their clothes uh, to look good and with specific fabrics, so on, so on, so on. It was all about uniqueness and standing out. And that's exactly the same still today on the runway. It's hand craftsmanship most of the time. It's uniqueness. It's like one-time pieces, and collections, and so on. Interestingly enough, in France, this was actually what like really uh, kicked off the economy, because France didn't have much colonies. They didn't have much resources, but they started to make everybody hyped about fashion and and wanting to have this and this garments and and and, and standing out and shining that they create a whole industry and a whole economy in their own country through that, uh, while other countries had their colonies and their resources. At the same time also, fashion is scarcity. And I think this is one of the most key aspects in the future we will see. It's scarcity. Um, something is not abundant or endless, and that's exactly what makes it valuable. Like, why is the Chanel timeless, uh, for example, the number one most uh, won the bag according to the Vestia Collective Bag Index because it's like not often produced and it's hard to get. So people want it even more, right? And it can rise in price. And a very important other piece is also history. So if something has history, for example, the dress uh, Marilyn Monroe wore at this event, um, it has value because she wore it back then and today. And everything in, his, uh, in fashion is about history. Like it's about the designer and, and his life and maybe his uh, loves and, and whatever happened around the company, whatever happened around specific dresses or why things were created and where they originated from and so on and so on. So it's actually about history. It's important uh, that we know what happened to the things to make it interesting for us, right? It's so all about storytelling. So Coco Chanel says it also really well. Jewelry is not unchanging. Life transforms it and makes it bend to its requirement. So actually, the luxury and the things, they change and they become interesting over time. So actually, I would say this connects very well with blockchain, <laughs> obviously, because blockchain creates exactly that. It's a base layer for uniqueness. For example, you cannot counterfeit a cryptocurrency. You cannot counterfeit a Bitcoin. I, I don't know if there's any other currency in the world you can not counterfeit because there's only one. And the system is only one. And everybody knows there's only one. You cannot just make a second one and, and sell it uh, as a real one. It's impossible. The same we have with craftsmanship in, in fashion. We have scarcity. And that's actually artificially chosen. Ex the same as it can be with uh, in fashion artificially, cho artificially chosen. But in blockchain, um, the tokens existing, for example, Bitcoins, are limited. There's a limited amount, and there's just not more, except everybody would agree that there will be more, which is pretty hard to get because it would dilute all the investments, right? And you have history. And everything in the blockchain is tracked over time, so you know exactly what happened when. You can actually see every uh, account balance over time and every account, how it changes over time. And you can actually um, track any kind of object on the blockchain. You could register. Uh, an object like a bag, you could register a land title like a house, uh, you could register everything on the blockchain and everybody would see who's the current owner, what happened, who was the previous owner. So the blockchain and the fashion industry and these two concepts have very much in common because they actually are the same thing or in fact the blockchain is the perfect base layer for the fashion.
So and I would say, yeah, quoting me here, <laughs> blockchain can manifest in the digital realm what fashion and design does in the physical world. Because it actually gives you that structure to do that. So it creates authenticity. Right? You can create objects which are uniquely identifiable and there's only one single item. You can uh, put chips in objects and make them unique. They are uncounterfeitable because you cannot copy the chip or you cannot copy the private key on the chip. You have a way higher reach because you suddenly can interact with the second and the third and the tenth owner of a product because you know the owner, even though you don't know who's behind it, that uh, number or this address, you can reach him. You could like send him uh, discount tokens, incentivize him to come back. Uh, you could actually send him messages, or you can build all kinds of new platforms around uh, having it reach to your customer, even if it's beyond your sell po selling point. And it creates a huge amount of interoperability and automation never seen before in the world. So we have the internet, and the inter internet allows us to communicate, and the blockchain kind of gives us the structure to operate on because it, it, it makes things work a specific way. And, and if you build a specific agreement system, it will only work this way. So you can have suddenly um, different companies interacting with each other, which normally wouldn't, because they wouldn't trust each other, or there's the, like it next needs too much contracts, or there's not enough transparency on each side. You can build a system where they can interact with each other, knowing that nobody of the two parties can cheat. So I would say the future of fashion is digital. And especially with the realm of VR, AR, and all that new technology coming up, probably the digital fashion will be ever more or even more important, and very more important than uh, fashion in the physical world ever was. And we will now uh, help with Luxo create this blockchain layer where you can build all of these use cases on top. And so if you're a brand and you're interested in building on the blockchain and actually building on the uh, fashion blockchain, then come talk to me and we will have a workshop at 6 o'clock if you go all the way to the end and then, sorry, 4 o'clock, yes, all the way to the end. And then on the left there's the masterclass and we will go a bit more in detail about use cases and think together uh, what can be done on the blockchain in the fashion space.